In this video, I'm going to show you how I put an above ground pool in my backyard. I'm going to show you every single step from the beginning to the end. Because of that, this video is kind of long, so I'm going to help you out by putting a table of contents in the description. I'll have headings and timestamps. Just click the timestamp next to the heading or the topic you're interested in, and it'll take you right there in the video. Enjoy. So today I'm getting started on my pool project. We're going to put an above ground pool here and I'm going to show you what I'm doing every step of the way. The first step is to clear the ground. So I rented a sod cutter from Home Depot for about a hundred bucks and I'm going to clear the sod out. The pool is a 30 by 18 above ground pool and I'm going to clear out about two feet extra on each side. So I'm going to do 34 by 22. this to do again I mean the tearing out the sod part I would mark my corners a little better because it would keep me from kind of going crooked on my edges which I did a little bit so I'm gonna have to fix that with a uh, with my spade and do a little bit of manual labor anyway live and learn one of the things I did when I was cutting out the sod is I cut it into 10 foot sections so that the uh, rolls would be manageable and also I thought you know somebody could use this sod and they're gonna appreciate having 10 foot sections. So here's my buddy Mike. He's like, yeah, I'll take all your sod. We got his truck and his trailer back here. We're going to load it up, get rid of all the sod. Now, if you don't have a friend who wants your sod, put it on Craigslist. Uh, almost guaranteed somebody will come grab it, especially if you put it on there for free. But I could actually probably sell some of this stuff, but uh, you know, I'm not going to sell it to my buddy Mike. He's, he's my buddy. <music> I have this all ready to go now. I have the sod torn out. My buddy came and carted all the sod away and now it's ready to level. So one mistake I made is that I didn't go low enough with the sod cutter. There's still another inch or so of sod root, like the grass root here. So when I'm trying to rake this ground, I realize uh, it's gonna be really hard to rake and move this dirt because uh, I'm still kind of tearing up sod with the rake, uh, unfortunate. Okay, so the next part of my project is to figure out what the grade is here and how much dirt I actually have to move. To do that, I am going to set up uh, some strings so I know what level is gonna look like and uh, then I can see how much dirt I have to move. And so I got some stakes here at Lowe's, running a string, putting a line level on the string and and getting some level lines in here and seeing, and that'll, that'll give me a lot of information. I got my line level here. It's like three bucks for a line level. Okay, so as you can see, I did a pretty good job of just eyeing it right at the beginning, but I think this side could come up a little bit. Yeah, that stake right there. I just pound it down a little bit and this line should be perfect. So that looks just about right now. So there is a level line. And that's about 10 inches there, eight inches. I'm gonna try this little electric rototiller. See if I can just chop up that top inch or so of ground so that it's easier for me to rake. This is a tiny little rototiller and this is a really big area, but my wife insists that I try this before I borrow my buddy's big rototiller. <laughs> interesting story see this it's a piece of glass um, we have a ton of this glass in our yard when we first got this house this was all a big field back here just muck we had a bunch of dirt blown in and uh, when they blew the dirt in about six to eight inches of dirt all over this entire yard it was filled with debris glass nails all kinds of things so I'm gonna have to give my wife some kudos because this uh, rototiller does seem to be doing the job although it's gonna be a lot of work to rototill this entire thing so I've been working on this for a couple hours today and I'm slowly getting it level. I've filled a bunch of wheelbarrow loads of dirt from the high spots and dumped them over here on the low end. One thing that's happening now though that you can see is I'm 
developing a little bit of a hill over here that could erode away. So I think I'm gonna need to make some sort of retaining wall, some small retaining wall on this side. I still have to put in my two to three inches of masonry sand on top of this when I'm done leveling it. constantly looking out for these little pieces of glass that I mentioned earlier. I'm also looking out for pieces of jasper and my favorite things to find agates. This this little agate here this is a nice one. Uh, nice little surprise just sitting in the dirt. So I'm nearly done leveling this now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that tamper and I'm just gonna go around and tamp the whole thing and and you know get it compacted as much as I can with the hand tamper. This may not look like a whole lot of work what you see here, but this folks was days and days and days and days and days and days of raking and shoveling and raking and shoveling and raking and raking and shoveling. And I should have about seven or eight inches on mostly spots. So there's eight inches, there's eight and a half. So it's pretty close. There's nine. Well, that's a little lower. Uh, there's eight, there's eight. So that's kind of a low spot right there. I need to improve that a little bit. I really don't need to do a whole lot more leveling with this dirt because when I bring when I bring in two or three inches of masonry sand, I can finish off my leveling job with that. <laughs> now gone and gotten my first load of masonry sand. I'm gonna get five or five to seven yards in here. I went and purchased five yards. Uh, if you buy in bulk, sometimes you can get a discount. So when I told them I was getting five yards, they gave me a 10% discount, which is nice. So I was planning on getting the sand load by load in my truck um, because most places were like a week or two out for delivery, but I have kind of a small bed in that truck. And where I was going to get the sand today, the guy was like, you know what, I don't really want to put it in that little truck in case I ding up your bed, you know? So he said, uh, just because of liability's sake, I'm just gonna stop what I'm doing right now and deliver this for you. Nice, reasonable charge. And that is Sundance Rockery on 18th and 164th. <laughs> yards of mason sand and I'm telling you leveling out five or six yards of mason sand is no joke uh, we've been doing this all day the sand was waste was so much higher on this end over here that I ended up having to uh, make a little retaining wall so I just brought in some boulders from around my yard because I always save them I have not yet rented a, a compactor and I don't know I got this guy compacting for me so maybe I don't even need to rent a compactor Okay, so I've changed things up a little bit here. As I've built this pad, I realized that some of the sand is below grade, and that's good because it has an edge. And some of it is above grade, so it's it's dropping off a little bit. You, you saw me make that little rock retaining wall. I don't think that rock retaining wall is good. I'm going to build, so I have decided to get some pressure treated wood and build like a little box around the whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drive 2x4s into the ground as stakes, and then I'm going to attach these to the 2x4 to the stakes. I'm going to screw them on so that they are uh, make a little level retaining wall around the pool. That way I can make sure the sand is completely level all the way to the edges as that is imperative. Um, the problem with not having the sand you know completely bound in on the edges is that, is that the weight of those arms on the pool is going to push that sand down and that that hill will just fall away so and that'll and then the pool will lose its shape so it adds to the project and I had to buy a bunch of wood and it cost a ton of money I mean this wood cost a ton of money. I bought some 2x6s, I bought some 2x4s, I bought some 12 footers, some 8 footers, I bought some uh, uh, some uh, pressure treated plywood to put the arms on. 
All told, this would cost me almost 500 bucks, believe it or not. Anyway, I'm a little bummed out about that, but that's the new direction this project is taken. I'm gonna get to it now. Step one, we're gonna cut five two by fours into two foot sections and make a whole bunch of stakes. recommend one of these. Battery powered craftsman, whatever kind of solid. What kind of solid is this? Compound miter. This is pressure treated wood. And just like when I did my hot tub, every time you cut pressure treated wood, you end up with a part of it that is not treated. So what does that mean? It means you have to treat it, unfortunately. So I put it on nice and thick. Um, we'll see if uh, I have enough to do a second coat later, but I still got to do the edges of all these pieces of plywood as well. A lot of people don't go through the trouble of doing this. So I think a lot of people, when they do projects like this, they kind of cut some of these corners and uh, that's fine. You can cut corners, but you'll pay for it later. So I'm done sealing all the ends of these pieces of wood. Now it's time to start building this sandbox. Okay, so I picked up the pool yesterday. I had to borrow a friend's trailer and everything was on a pallet. You can see all those big boxes. That's all the different stuff. I got a vacuum, I got a cover, I got the liner, I got the arms and the supports and all that stuff. Okay, so today is the day I actually build my little sandbox. And uh, I got my edge boards, I got my stakes. I'm gonna get to it. This little sandbox is gonna have three edges. One on this side, one on the other side, and one on that back side. Um, I'm not gonna put any boards on this side because it's below grade. So the uh, sod itself is gonna be the edge on this side. Okay, so as you can see, I have two stakes driven. Um, obviously, I made the stakes too long and I wasted a bunch of money on this wood. I cannot drive those into the ground any further than they are. Uh, so what a waste. See, I'm digging out a little bit of a trench so I can set that 2x6 in and, and uh, match it up. Okay, so as you can see, I have this board in here level. And it doesn't have to be absolutely 100% perfect, but, you know, that's how I like things. So it looks pretty good to me. And now that it's level, I'm gonna go ahead and tack it to my stake. Yeah, perfect. There we go. What I'm doing now is I'm cutting off, I drove these stakes in with a sledgehammer and this is as far as I could get these in. Most of them are about this height. So now I'm just coming along with a saw like this and hacking them off. I'm very pleased with what I got done today. As you can see, I got the post chopped off and I got it treated. And again, this post would have looked better right in the corner, but oh well, didn't get there. And um, this is a two by six, really buried deep here. Kind of overkill, but overkill is better than underkill, I, I would say. And there we go, all the way around. Pretty pleased with my progress today. Okay, so tomorrow, the next step, I'm gonna wet this all down and I'm gonna level this all out one more time until it's perfect. And then I'm gonna see if I need any more sand. If I don't, I'm ready to start building this pool, finally. Okay, I'm finally ready to build this thing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install this stuff right here. It's called Armor Shield. Uh, it's a pool pad. It's, I don't know, it's kind of like, feels kind of like landscape fabric. It's, it's another layer of protection in case there's still any debris in this ground, any rocks, any sharp objects, any glass, any, anything at all that could possibly poke through the pool. This will help protect it. Uh, Armor Shield is a great brand. Um, I did a lot of research and this brand is breathable. It, there's a lot of reasons I went with Armor Shield, but uh, I, there was an article I read where a pool installer said this is all he would use, this or I think Gorilla Pad, is all he would use because uh, the other ones cause problems. They either don't last long enough, mold builds up. He said this is the stuff to get. I'm finding that as we're working the area here, it's really important to keep the sand wet because if not, it just 
Once you start walking around out there, it just starts moving around. One thing that's a little disappointing is that the seam here on the end of this liner is really kind of muffed up, which means there are just going to be some wrinkles and there's not much I can do about that. Okay, so we finally got the pool liner laid out where we want it to be. Now the next step is to Take the frame out of the box. I think this is the box I needed, not that box. Okay, the next thing for me to do is to lay these pieces, these are part A, in their spots around the edges of the pool, and that's what I'm doing now. Look what I found over there. A big old hunk of glass laying on the side of the frame I just built yesterday. That's one of the things that worries me about this yard and this pool. So now we're assembling the uh, top rail of the pool. Okay, so now we're putting in the rails on the opposite side of the pool and we're gonna face them the opposite direction, so. so we're grabbing this rail, we're extending this out. Failure to follow the instructions may result in tearing of the material. Let's not tear it. Do not force corner piece. Material will not stretch. Don't tear your pool, people. Okay, now we are pulling the foot strap. straps out. Foot straps out so we can attach the uh, U arms or whatever they're called. You can see I'm very technical when it comes to this stuff. Okay, we're inserting the YouTubes, YouTube. kind of like the YouTube video I'm making here, into ah. the foot straps. Boom, that was amazing, I know. Elena makes an appearance, folks. Yay. How many do you need? Oh, whole thing. Enough for the whole pool? I, I didn't see them all. I just kept looking. Huh? I just kept looking. I didn't see them all. I just kept looking. I know. I know. Pop right out. But then this. I lost some of the video when I was actually setting the pool, actually raising the pool up. I cut my finger. Um, I let the pool kind of, when I was putting the bars in, I was clicking them in and um, the weight of the pool came down on one of those bars when it clicked in and pow, just took a big chunk out of my finger. So I ran in the house, I turned off my video and then I forgot to restart it when I came back out. So I was kind of frustrated. So you missed, unfortunately, us raising the pool like that penultimate moment. So sorry about that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my boards that I made, uh, the one by two foot pressure treated three quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna put it underneath these arms and I'm gonna set it flat with the top of the ground. So that's what I'm gonna to get to right now. That's three out of 22. This is gonna take longer than I thought. So a couple of my good buddies came over and helped me put together this filter here because no clue how to do it. I'm not even gonna to try to film how that all went together because it's impossible. I would suggest, uh, I don't know what I would suggest. I, I hope you have some good friends if you get a filter like that. It's gonna take days to fill this thing up. It's about 18,000 gallons. So here we go. The inaugural water splash. You wanna hold the hose? Well, there's your first view of the inside of the pool anyway. I do have a few wrinkles. I'll probably climb in there and try to get those out. These sides are a little bowed in, as you can see. See the one on the left there and on the right? But those will bow out when the water starts getting up there. There you go, you can see the water going in. And you can see that this is gonna take a long, 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 long time. And there's a problem with climbing in right now, Mike. I couldn't get out if I climbed in. Your ladder doesn't go in? Well, I don't have it built yet. Oh. I should probably build a ladder, everybody. Here it is. So 
the ladder. I, I say we do it without instructions. I don't think I'm gonna do a video on this. I think you guys can all figure out how to put a ladder together. I'm trying to get out a few of these wrinkles in here. My friend Mike seems to think it's a big deal. If that wrinkle's gone, go to the next one. I don't know, man. I need like a board or something. Yeah, that's better. Get those wrinkles out. Yeah, just like that. That's what I did. I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. All those ones in the middle. These things? I'd work every one of those out. That's impossible, dude. Oh, come on now. now I hear what you're saying. You, you, you would find it annoying in your pool. No, no, no. It's not that I would find it. I did find it annoying. When I was swimming in the pool last year, all I noticed was those big... It was like extension cords all over the bottom of the pool. I never noticed it once when I was swimming in your pool. Okay, so while this thing is filling up, I'm going to walk around to all these rails and I'm going to pull them all tight. That'll get some of the bigger wrinkles out of the bottom. Um, I don't think I'm going to spend too much time inside the pool pushing out the little tiny wrinkles. I think it's just important that the material not be actually like folded over on itself. So we got to watch out for that. So we have our first person in the pool. He wants to swim, but can't quite do it yet. As you can see, these pools bow in considerably when they're filling. I was told not to worry about this and that it can look quite concerning. It does, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm having this problem here, and this is where the water pumps back into the pool. Unfortunately, it's leaking. I also have a few leaks on some of the uh, connections here. So I'll have to take those off and retighten them. So you saw how bad these were looking before and I fixed them. All I did was I disassembled this whole unit. There are some threads on the outside, some threads on the inside. I put plumber's tape, four or five wraps are on the outside of this one, and then four or five wraps on the inside threads. Put it all back together, no leaks. Plumber's tape is the key. Okay, so to help me keep this pool clean, I got this, uh, Dolphin or this Matronics, Matronics Dolphin, I guess, same company. Uh, M200, it's a, it's a robot. It goes around the bottom of the pool, cleans up all the debris. It also climbs the sides of the pool and cleans the debris and, you know, scrubs a little bit to keep the algae off and things like that. So one nice thing about this M200 is it has a, supposedly has a tangle-free cord. So I guess we'll find out about that. There is the tangle free cord that's nice i guess this particular one doesn't do the water line but it does climb the walls so okay it's a little heavy some filters i guess and the power supply here we go we're gonna drop this sucker in the pool it's going is it yeah doing its thing okay so as you all know i got the m200 a Matronics Dolphin robot cleaner and you know what that thing didn't pick up dirt for beans well I mean look at this picture yeah that's what my pool looked like in the morning after running that thing for two hours actually that's two nights in a row of running that thing for two hours each and I still had these piles of dirt and sand in my pool and when I cleaned out the filters there was almost nothing in them I should have made a video of that but I didn't anyway I took it back I'm glad that uh, my dealer uh, gave me my money back on that I went with a cheaper option, one that's actually designed for above ground pools, and it's the Active 10, the Matronics Active 10. So I'm going to give that one a shot tonight. I'm going to unbox that in a minute, throw it in the pool, see how it does. Okay, another day, another robot. This one is the Dolphin Active 10. This one does not have the tangle free cord, which, whatever, it's $300 cheaper. I have seen a lot of complaints about these cords getting tangled, so I think I'm just going to have to be very vigilant when it's cleaning and check it every, you know, 10-15 minutes to make sure the cord is not getting tangled or kinked. I can tell you already it's a lot lighter than the other one. I think this one's 13 pounds, the other one was 19, so that's a positive for an above ground pool, I think. The Active 10. Yay. Oh, I will say, oh, here's the little power supply too. Definitely a smaller power supply. Um, one dealer in my area had an S50, a Dolphin S50, for 700 and something dollars, I think 750. And then somebody had this Active 10 for 599 and they gave me 10% off, so 540. So I turned the power on and here it goes. Let's see how this one does compared to the last one I had. 
Believe it or not, I got another robot. This one is the Active 20. It's the same robot as the S200. And, and so this one does the bottom, the sides, and the water line. And I got 10% off. I got a great deal on it. And so here it is, the Active 20. Here's the pretty little manual. Power supply over here on the left. And here is the robot itself with the much longer cable that is also anti-tangle. I think I'm gonna be really pleased with this robot. It is designed for an in-ground pool, but Maytronic said I could use it for an above-ground pool. I've also been on a lot of pool forums that are really helpful. And everybody says you can use the S200 or this robot in an above-ground pool, and there are plenty of people who do. So, very pretty. I like the way that handle just pops right up, boom. And you got one big filter box, which is nice. The ultra fine filters are in here. Yep, these are the ultra fine ones. Okay, let's go ahead and drop this guy in the pool. There it goes. It's about to go over a big leaf here. Let's see if it gets it. Nice. You got the leaf. Oh, it's trying to get to the water line. It's, oh, 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 it's hit the water line. Oh, it's scrubbing the water line now. Cool. So, one of my biggest complaints about this whole purchase is the ridiculous size of the solar cover we bought. It's hardly manageable with two people. We really struggled to get this thing out of the pool this morning. Uh, it's heavy when it's wet. I mean, it's almost an impossibility with two people. It's, I mean, it's over 30 feet long and it's 18 feet wide. It's, it's ridiculous. If you buy something this big, you have to have a cover reel. If you don't, forget about using this. It's too much trouble for two people to take on or to put on and take off every day. Too much trouble. So now comes the joyous task of us trying to get this thing off the pool. If you're plugging in anything for use with your pool, you need GFCI protection. I would recommend something with at least 12 gauge wire, like this Husky that I bought at Home Depot. I'll put uh, a link or two in the description to uh, portable units like these that I like. But really folks, you have to have GFCI protection. If you need an extension cord to power your pool pump, don't skimp on the cord. Get something that's at least 12 gauge, maybe even 10 gauge. Just don't skimp on it. Your equipment will last longer and it's safer. Also get something that's rated for outdoor use. 
It's also a good idea to make sure you have a waterproof housing over your electrical connections, like this. project is almost done. The only thing I didn't include in the video is the solar cover reel, which isn't going to be installed until July 26th. And I wanted to get this video done before that. A couple things in conclusion. Many of the products I used in this build are listed in the description of this video. You'll see the links to those products. If you click on those links and purchase the product, it'll really help me out. But even if you don't purchase the product and you visit Amazon using my links, believe it or not, that will help me out. So please do that. Was this project worth it? That's a big question I've been asking myself as I've been doing it. It's been a lot of physical stress, mental anguish, because I don't know what I'm doing. And I've been asking, and a lot of money too. And I've been asking myself, is this worth it? And I can answer that question now because we've had it up for a couple weeks. And the answer is yes, definitely worth it. We've created some awesome memories with my kids, with family, with friends, and I cannot put a price tag on those memories. I just can't. So yes, it's, no matter what I put into this, it's been worth it already and I have many years more to build more memories right so it's definitely gonna be worth it and my wife and I are getting exercise in this pool every day and that's worth it you, you can't put a price tag on your health right um, so that's worth it you can actually swim laps in a pool of this length so that's that's pretty awesome anyway that's about all I have to say thank you for watching this video I hope you learned a lot please subscribe to my channel I hope you enjoy this summer and I hope you get your pool project up and running right away